the pivotal principle of the Baha'i faith is the oneness of the human family. That the human race is moving from what we believe to be adolescence to adulthood. And so this concept of otherness that's dominated society forever has to change into this concept of oneness and unity. So one, we have to change a consciousness. Um, it seems like a vague term, but until you have a consciousness of oneness, then you can't build a society that's based on that. You, if you have a consciousness of otherness, that's how things play itself out. So we have that basic consciousness of our oneness, the basic, basic consciousness of a belief in God that wants us to come together as one. And then the Baha'i Faith offers very specific teachings, and I deal a lot with the black-white issues. So we have this consciousness, this belief in God, and then we have, okay, then what do whites and blacks specifically have to do to bring about, and I'll just talk about those two groups right now, specifically have to do to bring about this, this unity and this oneness. Well, beyond trying to spiritualize our lives and transform ourselves, there's some very specific guidance, and it's very challenging for, uh, challenging to look at, and only from a spiritual standpoint, in my view, can I view it as something that I could possibly do. And so there's very specific guidance of, to, to white people in the Baha'i scriptures that suggest that they have to rid themselves of their inherent sense of superiority and that they have to rid themselves of a patronizing attitude and that they have to be patient if, for example, and I'm kind of cutting to the chase on this, if black people don't respond immediately to their overtures. Uh, and they said because uh, black people have received for so long such grievous and slow healing wounds. Uh, and the right is going to say that white people have to persuade black people of the genuineness of their, of their friendship, etc. Now, if you look at that from an emotional standpoint or from a social standpoint, you say, a lot of white people say, why should I have to do that? You know, your, their ego kicks in and, and, and they're just thinking about how they feel about it. But the bigger picture says, but there's a spiritual reality here that's more important than my individual ego feelings. It says that black people, and this is a challenge for most black people that I meet when they first hear it, that black people have to wipe out every trace of suspicion uh, that may linger in our hearts, that we, have to, uh, that we have to show the warmth of our response, for example. And the Baha'i Faith says that that's kind of an equation, that if whites do this, blacks do this, then we can bring about a, a particular unity and a oneness of the human family. So it's applied spirituality, all right? Now, for me to actually show the warmth of my response to people that I've been suspicious with, uh, sp suspicious about most of my life, means I have to be in constant prayer to elevate my thinking and my consciousness and my spirit, so that I can truly, and again, it's a cliche, look at those, those people not from what has happened to me in the past, but as a creation of God who, who is valuable in, in the fact that they are a creation of God and love them for the sake of God. Now these are, again, uh, terms, principles that can apply in a lot of religions, but the application of it on a daily basis as I interact with white folks in this community or any, any other community, uh, I find uh, challenging. But those are things that the Baha'i Faith is suggesting very specifically can begin to heal the wounds of racism, racism between blacks and whites. There's more. Uh, but that's, that's a particular equation uh, that is, is given to us. Uh, and uh, in that equation, it makes it clear, and I think this is another thing that spirituality brings to the table in religion, is that in the realm of spirituality, in a sense, there are no victims because we all have the capacity to draw on the power of God to transform and transcend anything that we've been through. And so in society, we may say there's victims and, and people are oppressed, which is true. But yet at the same time, there's a capacity that we can draw on to, to, to overcome any of that. And that's a belief that most religions hold. If you tap that power of God, if you draw on that power of God, if you have that connection, that you can overcome almost anything. And it's required, uh, I think, if, uh, for example, I'm going to be forgiving. Uh, because it's not that I have to be forgiving once or twice. It's I have to be giving, forgiving four and five and six and seven and eight and ten times and throughout my life. Well, I have to have something to draw on that's uh, greater than myself to be able to do that. And I think spirituality and I think the Baha'i Faith, uh, I don't want to say in particular because I think most religions uh, have that belief, but as a Baha'i, that's a very strong principle. In fact, we're told that when somebody harms us, we should instantly forgive them, which is, again, uh, easy to say, very very tough to do. The application of that is if somebody is racist, somebody does a racist thing toward me, the suggestion is that I should instantly forgive them. And in forgiving people, in my understanding of the Baha'i Faith, I'm not saying it's all right that they did it. 
I'm saying that my spiritual responsibility to create healing is to forgive. And again, that's a spiritual construct. It's not an emotional one. Emotionally, I can't forgive day in and day out. I have to be able to, to renew that, draw on something to renew that. And that's what, to me, spirituality is about and what the Baha'i Faith offers me uh, in terms of being consistent.